We're now being joined by Dr. Aliu Elias, who will be uh, speaking to us surrounding uh, this particular problem. Hello and good morning, Dr. Aliu. Good morning and thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us on the program. It's been a minute. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you. Yes, so very quickly, uh, the the issue coming in from my degree, the Brno State Capital, yesterday residents woke up to their houses submerged in flooding. And what the National Emergency Management Agency is reporting right now is that about 70% of the state capital has been submerged by flooding and, you know, scores of people have lost their lives. Thousands have been displaced and even the federal government has ordered for the IDP camps to be reopened uh, for people to wow. be rehabilitated. Right. I think uh, first and foremost, I expect the federal government to declare state of emergency in Brno because what happened have a lot of uh, effects even beyond the uh, as it is so much now because you know it comes with a lot of uh, issues you know health related issue people cannot go to school again people cannot go to their work uh, again and you, you you agree with me that even after the uh, flood has received because according to the uh, update we have now that the water is receding uh, gradually you know the infrastructure in that state is going to be in a state of uh, uh, coma too so i think federal government need to do something very 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 urgent to uh, save that situation however i think uh, nigerian is not even learning the lessons because i think here uh, every year we saw if we don't see in bauchi we see in gombe we see in yobe now there is need for us to build our own dam to make sure that when such thing comes it will be able to absorb i think that's what we need to work on more for now well well uh reports have also said that you know the uh, prison in Brno, in my degree, has had a prison break or has been affected by the flood, thereby uh, causing inmates to escape. The zoo has also uh, been compromised and animals, wild animals, including snakes, crocodiles and the rest have escaped into neighboring communities. Uh, w what does this mean for the safety of an already volatile my degree? Right. In as much as uh, it is it is force majeure, it's, it's categorized in the force majeure, an act of God, that sometimes you may not actually plan for it. So what they need to do, because we are only talking about people that escape, what about people that lost their life? Because we got to hear that some inmates actually lost their life as well, because you know they cannot escape until they all get to uh, fall. I think uh, well, the fact just means that there should be much more security now beyond before, to actually trace these people that have actually uh, escaped uh, and also Clear. you know the the, the 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 thing is we must always prepare for such emergency in future because i can tell you that about 25 30 years back ago this same thing occurred in Meduguri, and we, the, there was no object there was no 30 years down the line there was no any plan to curb it so that it will not reoccur again because I, I have to ask some questions and I got to know that it happens about 25, 30 years ago of this, uh, up to of this magnitude and everywhere was submerged with water. So for the image, I think the police the security agency need to uh, start their own work. Then you also see that uh, a lot of reptile must have even entered the city as well. So I think they should be more cautious because from the video footage we are seeing, most people from Bruno are still walking around the water. If I was some children uh, kind of swimming in the water, I think these are the things they need to caution so that all these reptiles will not uh, have a negative uh, effect on all the citizenry that have suffered loss of uh, uh, their houses and their belongings. Well, well uh, people have said that dead bodies as have been seen floating around in the city and uh, according to other reports as well, that warnings were made several times by uh, uh, individuals, concerned individuals, that the dam had, the integrity of the dam had been, had been compromised and that it was leaking, yet uh, no action was taken or it was just swept under the carpet only for them to wake up this morning to realize that the entire city including uh, the government house, including the Shehu of Brno's palace, have all been submerged by water. Right. You recall, I just mentioned that it happened 30 years ago. And this one also, there was a warning that such thing is going to happen. What have we do? Have we told people to move to the higher ground? 
you know have you told people to evacuate some area because that's in a other climb that's how it's once we see signs we tell people that okay don't go to this particular area go to this particular area. and the concern of dead body uh around you recall that uh, most uh, islamic uh, uh, barrier are not uh, where you have to seal the uh the grave maybe with cement you no know, they are mostly not uh that type now the challenge is that now is that our health ministry health organization need to also come to uh, terms with what have just happened and make sure that they create an emergency in terms of outbreak of any diseases because so, such water can come around about with a lot of uh, diseases you know that can spread through the uh different things that have actually uh mixed with water you know even especially dead body and a lot of things i think our health authority generally for me i think there's a state of emergency on that area because if you look at the hospital look at the schools a lot of things has been has go down with this uh, uh flood so i think there should be state of emergency so that it will capture all the necessary things and there should be special fund from the federal government to that community because i can tell you i have a personal family uh, uh that this this affected i can tell you they have lost their house they also have shop in the market they have also lost their belongings in the market so they are like starting from the grand zero in terms of their belongings in their residence and even their businesses so they need to bring sukkah to these people you know they are just trying to recover from the challenges of a boko haram and insurgency in the states now this now double their problems well well in in places like anambra state uh, in the southeast region uh, farmers have started have vested their crops prematurely due to fears of an impending uh, flooding in the area as well. And we have also seen that reports say that about 29 uh, states in the nation have experienced severe flooding in 2024 alone. Are we seeing a spate of flooding sweeping across the country, uh, considering that, I mean, August just ended, we are in September, the rains have not gone yet, even though the Maiduguri issue was not an issue of rainfall, it was a dam collapse. But are we likely going to see more of these occurrences across the country? Right. You know, to be fair with the meteorologists, they have came about and saying that there is likely to be a case of flooding in some states. And for you to remove your produce prematurely before the flood, so I think it's quite instructive because it would have been better. Imagine if people in Borno have the information that there will be flood, there will be, you know, dam uh, or breakage or something, they would have go at least save some level of crop. But now we lost everything in that area. And that will have economic impact on Nigerians because, you know, most food produce from that exists now will not be, has been lost to this. Farmers have lost their produce and a lot of things may have. And it may deepen our challenges of food uh, 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 hike our food uh, scarcity in nigeria or food price uh, yeah, and if you look at our inflation it's much more food uh, food driver uh, inflation so i think it's a call to action if other states can also look into it and provide uh, a super or provide an emergency solution it is not bad to remove your produce prematurely if at least you can still get something uh, from it i think it will be a better one compared to it uh, being washed washed off by a uh, flood. I think if there is that alert, Nigeria should do the needful. And once the meteorologists give that alert, I think we are a country that doesn't take to warnings. Because by the time meteorologists tell us tell us that there will be a uh, serious flooding, what next is for Ministry of Agriculture to call these people, to call people, farmers to action? That if you have this between this period, remove it. If you have this, do this, do that. Don't concentrate on farming this period because of the challenges. I think that would have solve a lot of uh, problem you know it will not uh, come to loss you know, it is a double loss now you have expended money on the farm you cannot get any produce from it so it's, it would have been better if you are warned and you don't even go ahead to plant at all. well well, well dr aliu a lot of people would argue that um, in nigeria we tend to pay more attention to emergency response rather than prevention as the case of Maiduguri that we have seen right now. How can we uh, measure up to ensure that these emergency agencies, SEMA and NEMA, do not only respond to the after effects of these emergencies, but rather put strategies in place to make sure that they don't even uh, happen in the first place? 
Right. And that's why I said that um, most Nigerians, we are so like a dicey crew that we wait for things to happen before we take action. Immediately we saw the the news uh, from meteorologists that there's going to be flood in a particular state. I think SEMA need to be uh, proactive than, be, than being uh, reactive. The same SEMA can also go to the farmers and support them in the way of maybe replanting or taking away what they have produced to higher ground or whatever. But we will wait until the, it happens. I recall China just uh, announced, was it last week, that there will be a kind of uh, typhoon or so in a particular area in China. And a month to the incident, everybody is evacuating. They are moving people to higher ground. Their belongings have been moved, supported by the by the their their their, their, their country government. And that side we should see. We have seen different cases where warnings are being given, but we don't take heed to such warnings. I think we should go beyond being uh, reactive, but proactive. Now, now in, in at a time like this in 2024 alone, there is a report that about 229 people have been killed nationwide 386,239 have been displaced and 94,492 houses have been submerged by flooding across these 29 states that have been affected it appears that as as unserious or as not major as it might seem flooding is actually a very big issue that has been causing a lot of havoc in the country, especially for uh, people in rural areas in, in the nation. Do you share the same thoughts, Dr. Eli uh, Aliu? Well, the fact remains that even our governors, our state governors need to be up and doing because it costs them more to maintain compared to preventing. So prevention is always the best thing. So I think our state governor also needs to be up and doing because we can see the SEMA and NEMA they are rushing everywhere. Perhaps I don't want to use the Nigeria parlance, whereby I say it's because they want to benefit from from the trouble itself, which shouldn't be uh, at all at all. So I think we should be much more proactive. Look at the number of life losses, look at the number of property being lost. Look at even the cost effects on the federal government to actually restore people, you know, to save them. Because if you look at Bruno the cost of preventing is less compared to the cost of repairing you know most people most family will, will, will be so we will try to survive for the next 10 years from this loss even the state government will have to construct reconstruct a lot of road you know when there is flood like this it's washing and perhaps that place is not a coastal area like lagos like baesa like what they're not coastal area so people don't actually expect such level of flood you know if it's a coastal area you plan even your bridges your gutter would have factored in such eventualities but it is not a coastal area it's a dam that got collapsed or was not maintained as expected so it's a very very uh devastating and it's quite appalling to see that we are not taking heed to uh prevent to prevent what uh, shouldn't have happened at all at all i think we should learn from this and make sure we always be uh proactive than trying to be reactive well, well, going forward, uh, we learned that the federal government has ordered the Borno state government to reopen the IDP camps, which were initially meant for victims of the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast. Um, however, apart from sending these people to IDP camps for the meantime, which is a short-term remedy for this disaster, uh, what other measures do you think that the federal and state governments can take in order to ensure that these people return to their normal lives. As at this morning on the system uh, media, I got to know that a man was interviewed and he said he has been able to raise 600,000 to feed people. And the only thing they can eat was bread because, you know, it's a quick one to, to actually uh, prepare. So there's a lot of emergency need in that area now. So now the IDP, the IDP camp we are talking about, are you sure it's not submerged as well? So, and if you look at Bruno, I don't think there's major higher ground on, uh, on Bruno. I think what they need to do is to evacuate people from a particular area to maybe close to uh, UB, which is a closer uh, state, maybe maybe Portiscon and those axes that yes. are. Now, then there should be pre pre uh, um, provision of food. I think that's the first thing to do provision of food and shelter for these people. Because, like my person, I told you that I have, the person has to go outside that environment to look for shelter. If you even watch some uh, media, you see people sleeping on the road. 
because there is no place for them to, to, to sleep. Even those people that are not affected, they have been overwhelmed with the number of people they are receiving in their houses. So people resorted to sleeping on the on the street of Midiguri. So government needs to do something uh, in my, uh, to really provide that for them. If they can provide emergency tents, that is also uh, possible at a higher ground so that people can be there to... And you know, another problem now is that a lot of schools have been closed. So it also have a negative effect on children who are just resuming psychologically, and a lot of things need to cater to for them. You know, imagine someone who has lost his uh, residence, lost his uh, uh, place of work. You know, it's serious. It's a serious trouble. And most most people there may not be civil servant that will say, okay, no matter what, there will be salary. But people that work, uh, permit me to use this language that. Uh, work from work to mouth or work to mouth directly. It's a pretty difficult for them now. So I think government should also find. Well, Dr. Ali, if you can hear me, uh, well, I believe we lost that connection there. But as we look to uh, reopen connections with Dr. Ali for him to brief us some more on this issue. Hello, Dr. Ali, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, as you were saying. Right. Yes, basically, government needs to do more to actually, in fact, if there's a way you can pay these people, give them some stipends, because now they don't have any other means. So I think we should, and that's why we need data. But I can also say that kudos to the federal government, because I noticed the, I noticed the vice president, you know, being in his, in his hometown, actually, went to Boron immediately. In fact, I saw him entering the, the, the water himself, and that shows uh, uh, a lot of, uh, that there's a lot of concern from the federal government. That's a good uh, optics, and I want them to back that up with a lot of emergency funds. Now, in terms of security of lives in the in the uh, Burno State capital, Maiduguri, we know that people have lost their lives due to the flooding. But I earlier mentioned that some inmates escaped from prison due to the integrity of the prison being compromised because of the floods. And perhaps out of this, about 200 inmates that escaped, a number of them could be members of the Boko Haram terrorist uh, sect. Uh, how much of a danger does this pose to the Maiduguri city itself, Berno State as a whole, and neighboring Yobe, Adamawa, and, uh, and, and other states? Every escape of image is a danger to every environment. Beyond the environment, is a danger to even Nigeria itself. So I, I think the security agency needs to do more, because especially Maiduguri, because we know that most inmates in Maiduguri uh, uh, those people that have been caught in this uh, uh, banditry, uh, kidnapping, and terrorist uh, acts. So I think government needs to do more to make sure that. But in, in record time, have we seen such? Because you know, in Suleja, it recalls there was a there was a um, a fence collapse, uh, collapse, war collapse in a Suleja prison. How many of them do they get actually gone back? Do we have record uh, for that? That's another problem. So I think the image going out of the uh, custody, it's a serious uh, danger for Nigeria. I mean, even here in Abuja, there was a, a, a prison uh, break sometime, a couple of years ago. And uh, till today, no proper record has been given to Nigerians as to whether or not these inmates have been recaptured. I believe a number of them have escaped and escaped for life. Right, uh, pretty uh, bad because uh, you know, you, you know, you even compare this one that is force major, an act of God that even the prisoner does not know that will happen. The one at Koje was a calculated one by those people, and which is much more dangerous. But I think this one is a pretty because this also said some of the inmates lost their life in the process. So I think it's just issue of the script to just swing to action. Uh, from now and make sure that they hunt if they can get some of this. All right. Uh, well, 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 Dr. Aliu, I would also want you uh, to react to the recent arrest and release of the NLC president, Comrade Joe Ajero, and statements coming in from uh, the presidency surrounding uh, the, his case uh, or his 
alleged terrorism financing case uh, with the with the government. And this story is on the Vanguard newspaper. So before I get your reaction to this, let's uh, pick up a copy of the Vanguard newspaper together and have a brief overview of the headline story there. On the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, you'd find beneath the masthead, Ajero. Nobody is above the law, says federal government. Strapline say allegations of rights abuse in Nigeria false. Federal government replies UKTUC. My ordeal with DSS operatives, other security agencies, NLC president says they are fishing for evidence to nail us. Confirms return of seized passport, phones, and how pressure from local international community forced government to release Ajero. NLC to conduct medical checks on its president. Operation from Tinubu's regime surpasses military dictatorships, says former Vice President al Haji Atiku Abubakar. We didn't raid. We came for investigation, DSS tells Serap. Now, these are the strap lines accompanying the headline story on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. Well, back to you, Dr. Aliu. I believe you've... Uh, listen to me read out all these, uh, uh, you know, strapline stories surrounding this particular controversial issue with Ajero and the federal government. What is your reaction to this development? Right. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a recurring issue for Ajero. You recall since he became um, president of NLC, he has been having serious issues with security agency. You recall what happened, uh, was it Imo, whereby he was malhandled by police, you know, has been having issue with uh, security agency back and forth but in as much as uh, he's not uh, above uh, law but i think the government should come clean in this case you recall that uh, police invited him in which he honor and the, i mean the justice also uh, invited uh said they invited but the fact is that why do you arrest him while he's going out of the country because he's hoping having a two cup and one is ahead is the uh, is Alan is Joe Ajero, but Ajero, Joe Ajero now, as a, now is the president of NLC. I think he should be accord with that. So for you to have gone uh, arrest him at that period, it's a bad optics for for Nigeria. In as much as we won't hold brief for him that he has not committed anything, but you recall when they actually went to uh, labor house, they said they saw the first thing is that somebody there in the second floor had issue. Second thing is that there is a terrorist. We thank God that later they find out the details of that person. And now, Ajero, you know, it's Ajero himself now they have been inviting. And they are giving him treasonable allegation, which is quite. Uh, so, uh, if I want to see this from this perspective, I think it, there is a, a sign that government is trying to gag or reduce NLC, if you ask me, simply because why is it now that all this is coming up? For Ajero, and we know Ajero stand on issue of the uh, maybe minimum wage, issue of the uh, increment in uh, subsidy. I yes. mean, removal of subsidy yeah. and increment in uh, for price. And then beyond that, again, it's appearing because if you look at uh, Mohammed Buhari regime for good eight years, we didn't see it up to this level because we also have the one of uh, uh, Serap. You know, we also have we have seen journalists being harassed severely. So we did not see it to this level during World War. So I wonder why a Democrat like uh, uh, Bola Tinubu has also suffered a lot of taming, a lot of uh, harassment that you don't have to leave the country to look for uh, uh, asylum and what have you. So I think it, we, they need to be cautioned so that we won't see them from that negative perspective. And the negative optics is that the UK government or among other TUC are seeing Nigerians as unserious and trying to uh, suppress the voice of the labor. Well, well the, the presidency or the DSS, firstly, has said that Comrade Joe Ajero cannot leave the country with the current terrorism financing allegations that are on him. And it appears to be that Comrade Joe Ajero is perhaps the most troubled and, and uh, NLC president uh, that the union has ever had in the country. 
Is it because of his proactiveness towards fighting the cause of uh, the, the Nigerian workers in general? Or are we seeing something more deeper than the eyes can see? I, I don't think he's the most... Uh, will I use rugged? Because Oshomele is much more rugged. But well, well, well I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the most troubled. He, he has been the most troubled by the authorities. Right. I think that's correct. He's the most troubled by the uh, uh, federal government. However... I think uh, when, when, when you take such position, you should be ready to actually uh, challenge the authority if they are not doing the, the, the right thing. But I think he's the most uh, troubled uh, one. And uh, like I told you, you recall, and also, he also immersed himself to an extent with the Labour Party. You know, when you romance politically sometimes, it comes back to haunt, to haunt. So I think that's what they should separate going forward. Because look at the uh, Cambridge first also, Sifo. Though he's a... He's a union uh, leader too, but you don't see him mesh himself so much the way Ajero is doing. I think that should, going forward, they also have to have that caveat that no, once you are uh, president, you don't romance with any uh, political party, even though they, according to them, they own the uh, Labour Party, they actually register it. But I think to an extent, you need to also be cautious. But beyond that, I think governments uh, can wait sometime. Uh, for him to finish his tenure or something before they start giving him all this uh, negative optics. But from the report we are getting, uh, I think he has gotten his uh, passport back. Can he travel is the question now. Well, former Vice President Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, who also doubles as uh, the PDP uh, presidential candidate in the last elections, has been quite vocal in the news lately against President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration. And this time around, he uh, described Tinubu's regime saying oppression from Tinubu's regime surpasses military dictatorships in the country. If you have a very good history, which I believe you do, of military dictatorships in Nigeria, uh, you will perhaps agree that there might be an iota of truth in what uh, Al Haji Atiku Abubakar is saying. What are your thoughts? Well, first and foremost, let me congratulate Atiku Abubakar because, you know, before now, he usually traveled down to Dubai after every election. But maybe you are seeing that Nigeria has been criticizing him as the opposition leader, that why at every lot of election you travel down to Dubai. So if he's here to really talk, and I'm happy that he always on the headline, and on the headline of news now, the way he tried to uh, talk about governance and how they are doing. But I want him to go beyond that and always provide alternative uh, uh, solution, but on the issue of uh, he comparing uh, the government to you know to, to military dictatorship, I think uh, there is an element of truth in that because by the time you start arresting this, you know, stopping this from uh, you know complaining, you know, making sure you tame the NLC, you know, and at this troubled time that everybody is talking, you know, remember what happened at uh, end bad. Uh, and as two, it was not taken lightly by the federal government. You know, a lot of people are also still in custody. According to Falana, we have about 2,000 people in custody. So it, there's an element that it's appearing that uh, they are more tired. It's becoming tyrannically, I mean, it, it appears tyrant in, in a tyrant manner now the way they are handling it. So I, I will caution the Tinubu government, government to tolerate people to an extent. This is a democratic uh, uh, setting where people have rights to uh, actually talk. Perhaps. If you look at NLC and what they are fighting for, for me, I think it's a troubled time for Nigeria where a particular voice needs to defend our people. All, all right. Well, well, the UK's Trade Union Congress has uh, said the allegations of uh, rights abuse in Nigeria are quite eminent. However, the federal government has refuted these claims saying that the UK to UC does not have the right to accuse it of alleged uh, human rights abuse in the country. How does this portray Nigeria's image on the global scene? Well, if you ask me, I think it's a negative optics for us, and that's why I said it's it's quite not well professional. Uh, as DSS, they have the contact, the location of every person. So why was he not arrested? You know, the, I mean, why was he not arrested from his house, from his offices, and he was not declared wanted? You know, if he is declared wanted, and you now uh, 
try to apprehend him why he wants to travel or it's a different thing so i think it's a negative optics for the day i think and we should be sensitive to this he's going for a global program perhaps he has a presentation in that place and it has disrupted their own pro program too i know that all these uh comrade and trade unions they want to also fight for uh, each other so i think it's in order for them to try to caution the federal government from uh, such uh, 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 actions it's a negative optics i must agree with them well, well in closing in just a few words uh, dr aliu uh, what, what would be your message to one the federal government the nlc and its president and also the international uh, labor community including including the uk tuc right i think the federal government through the nigerian police the security agency DSS, they should uh, be much more professional in the way they are approaching things they should also be looking at you know sometimes it appears they are playing to the gallery because you can also do this without bringing it to the front of media or global community then i think ajero himself if need be he should submit himself and face uh, some question if they want to actually ask him and i'm sure his lawyers are always with him so and they are briefing him so i think and for international community sometimes we have the operationalization of our policies is different from each other so they, they should see us from our own perspective as well all right uh, thank you very much uh, dr aliu Elias, uh, for finding the time to join us on this morning's newspaper headline review segment. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.